First, gently pipette mix your cell or nuclei suspension 10 times with a wide bore P200 pipette tip. The cell or nuclei suspension should be freshly mixed before transferring into the pips to prevent settling from impacting your sample loading. Next, add four microliters of your freshly mixed sample plus 40 units of RNase inhibitor directly into the pips. Ensure cells or nuclei are dispensed into the pips layer, not just on the surface of the pips. If performing multiple reactions, add cells and RNase inhibitor to all pip tubes before proceeding to the next step. Then, pipette mix each sample 10 times using a standard bore, low retention P200 tip to ensure even dispersal of the sample. It is important to pipe it slowly to the first stop only to avoid creating foam or excessive bubbles. This step should be completed with the pip tubes in the four tube stand. We are not showing that here, so proper mixing can be observed. Next, add 280 microliters of partitioning reagent down the sidewall of the pip tube. Tightly cap tubes and place in the rotating vortex adapter in the horizontal configuration. Ensure the tubes are fully inserted into the adapter. Samples will be vortex for 15 seconds in the horizontal configuration, followed by 2 minutes in the vertical configuration at 3000 RPM. For better vortexing efficiency, we recommend starting the timer at 2 minutes and stopping the vortex with 1 minute and 45 seconds remaining, or after 15 seconds of vortexing horizontally. Rotate the vortex head into the vertical configuration and hit the start button to vortex vertically for 2 minutes. At the end of this step, we have generated our emulsion and captured our cells or nuclei inside our single cell droplets. Now. We need to remove the excess partitioning reagent from the bottom of the tube so there is room to add the lysis buffer. After the emulsion has stabilized post vortexing, use a low retention P200 pipette tip to pipe it out 115 microliters of partitioning reagent from the bottom phase. Place the pipette tip at the bottom of the tube and wait 5 seconds before aspirating. Wipe the tip on the side of the tube on the way out to avoid any sample loss due to pip's retention to the pipette tip. The user will repeat this step a second time to remove another 115 microliters from the bottom phase using the same technique to avoid sample loss. Aliquot 40 microliters of CLB3 into the tubes for each sample being processed. For the remaining chemical lysis steps, we recommend processing one sample at a time. Add 120 microliters of partitioning reagent down the sidewall of 1.5 mil tube containing CLB3. Next, vortex a tube for 10 seconds at max speed on a standard benchtop vortexer to generate the chemical lysis emulsion. Immediately transfer the entire chemical lysis emulsion into the PIP tube before closing the tube and inverting 10 times. Then, proceed with the next sample by adding partitioning reagent and repeating these same steps. Verify that PIP-Seq dry bath is preheated to the appropriate temperature for your sample type. Then, insert the samples into the dry bath and select Skip and Yes to begin lysis incubation. Please refer to the user guide for the cell and nuclei lysis temperature profiles for this step. After incubation is complete, this is the first stopping step of the workflow. Samples are stable at 20 degrees Celsius for up to 96 hours. After preparing all your mRNA isolation reagents as detailed in the user guide, place PIP tubes in the 4-tube stand and aspirate up to 130 microliters of excess partitioning reagent out of the bottom phase, being careful not to aspirate out any of the upper emulsion phase. Remember to wait 5 seconds prior to aspirating and wipe your pipette tip on the way out of the tube to prevent sample loss. Next. Add 200 microliters of breaking buffer down the PIP tube sidewall, followed by an addition of 40 microliters of pink departitioning reagent added in the same fashion. We will then invert the sample 10 times to break our emulsions. After spinning down your samples in a benchtop minifuge for 5 to 10 seconds, aspirate all of the bottom pink waste phase. 
with a pipette set to 70 microliters, begin with aspirating out the bright red dot at the interface before continuing with aspirating the rest of the waste. Spin down the samples for another 5 to 10 seconds. Then, use good lighting to double check for any remaining pink waste at the bottom of the tube. Be sure to carefully aspirate out any remaining pink waste with the P20 pipette using small circular motions. It is critical to remove all of the pink waste, as it is inhibitory to reverse transcription if not fully removed. Once you've removed all the pink waste, your samples can be placed on ice and you can move on to the washing section of the user guide. With a P200 low retention pipette, slowly aspirate 180 microliters of the pips from the 0.5 mil sample tube and transfer that volume into one of the 1x wash buffer aliquots in the 1.5 mil tubes. Briefly centrifuge the remaining volume in the 0.5 mil sample tube on a benchtop minifuge to bring the liquid to the bottom of the tube. Then, do a second transfer of any remaining pips into the same wash buffer aliquot. Be sure that no pips remain in the sample tube or the pipette tip. If droplets remain in the pipette tip, flush them out by aspirating up and down in the wash buffer aliquot at least three times. Vortex makes pips using the blue 1.5 mil tube stand by holding the stand horizontally on a flathead vortex mixer for three seconds. Centrifuge the 1.5 mil tubes of wash pips for one minute on a benchtop minifuge. Gently. Place the 1.5 mil tubes of wash pips into the 1.5 mil stand to aid in supernatant removal. Aspirate and discard the aqueous supernatant to the 4 or L marker on the tube stand without disturbing the pips pellet. Add 1 mil more of 1x wash buffer and repeat these steps to perform 4 total washes before moving on to volume regulation. After transferring your fourth and final wash into PCR tubes and spinning down the fluid and plate fuge, remove the A-tube strip from the red guide rack and check each of your sample pips pellets. Note if there are any samples with the obvious bead loss in your lab notebook. Next, we will use the red guide wire to remove the excess wash buffer. Remove the supernatant above the pips to the level indicated by the guide wire rack. If any foam is observed, carefully remove it as well without disturbing the pips. The meniscus of the solution should sit perfectly behind the guide wire. This is critical to ensure proper volume regulation of the sample for mixing with our RT Master Mix. Users can then proceed to reverse transcription.